Well, I suppose you've got the French horn, you've got the English horn, cor anglais, you've got the Swiss Alp horn. I think this would be the, uh, the Australian horn. I don't think there's anything called that yet. The Australian horn, and if you want to give it the full name, I mean, they don't just call it a Swiss horn, they call it a Swiss Alp horn. This would be the Australian garden horn. Australian hose horn? Australian hose horn, Australian garden horn. French hose? French hose. Ooh. Hey! <laughs> That's exactly what it is. This is French hose. He's playing French horn, I'm playing French hose. Yeah. The exciting thing is tomorrow, the day before the concert, uh, preparation, various people will be rosining their bows, perhaps some new strings, playing them in. I'll be going to the hardware store and buying two Hardy Pope non-kink hoses. The reason for this is I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm going to, as quickly as I can, cut one of them to length and experiment with how quickly I can make the horn. And then if that works, I've got the other fresh one ready to do that on stage for the crowd on Sunday. Um, as a backup, I'll have this Stradivarius on stage because it's, it's actually, um, it's okay, it's a done thing, it's accepted for chefs on television to say, and you just do this, you just do that. When they get to the stage where it's looking like a mess, they go anyway. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Jamie Oliver does it all the time. This uh, next piece, is Mozart's uh, fourth horn concerto in E flat, and I'd like you to welcome to the front of the stage our horn soloist, Chris Young. Chris is going to be playing the, uh, the third movement of this concerto. It's, it's a beautiful piece of music. I've always loved this concerto, and particularly the French horn. I've always, uh, well, it's something I don't play, but I don't have a French horn. It is a pity I don't, but actually, well, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be a pity. We could turn this into a double horn concerto because I happen to have a plan. I can see he's open to this. Just one moment. See, this, uh, this piece was written before the French horn existed. Um, it was actually a hunting horn originally. It didn't have valves. They put uh, more crooks and tubes on it in the 18th century. In the early 19th century, they put the valves on and it became the French horn. But... Um, the horn concerto was written when Mozart wrote it. Thank you, Matthew. Um, they teach you that in conducting school. Um, the, the horn concerto was written, can you hold that? Uh, for a horn that didn't have vowels, for the natural horn. So theoretically, it's possible to play it on any piece of tube that's the right length. And um, I thought that perhaps I could join in on the horn concerto here and perhaps you could play French horn and I could play French hose. Uh, this just has to be the right length. Now, some of you might be thinking, I don't know that this is really... Can you hold the other side of that? Yeah, thanks. Watch your fingers. This is really appropriate in a Mozart concert to be mucking around like this with a garden hose. This would be more something you'd see on a, you know, a Vegas show. But in actual fact, we're taking a, uh, a lead here from the composer himself because uh, you may not be aware that Mozart was a great practical joker. And in fact... So a horn out of a garden hose, how, how do you go about doing that? Well, I thought it'd be nothing. I thought all I had to do was get a bit of garden hose, throw a funnel on the end for a bell and a mouthpiece on the end and blow it. And if it was a bit too low, cut a bit off. Yeah, you right. want to start with one that's too long. And until I got the pitch right, no worries. Um, but it's not that simple at all. All the harmonic series was out on it and the tuning went wonky up the top. And it, was, it wasn't just a thing of you know, using your hand in the bell to get the, the notes in the cracks. Right, right. Just getting the, the harmonic series right was a, a huge drama. I ended up... I mean, it was, it was quite an involved thing. I mean, on stage, I undid the packet and just got out the hacksaw, but I'd done all the, the, the research at home. Uh, I spoke to an instrument manufacturer in Switzerland that hand makes horns, and, and he said, oh, no, you can't just, you've got to do this. And this. I went, oh, okay. And he started talking about the, the bore to length ratio. And so I'm down at the hardware store asking questions they've never heard before, like I'm looking for a hose with a bore to length ratio of this if it's in E flat. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, it's, I, I, I must admit I had a lot more admiration, not only for the instrument manufacturers and what they go through, but the, the horn players back in Mozart's day, um, you know, playing these instruments. I mean, now if it gets a bit hard, you can just grab one with some valves. But it's, uh, it's not easy to play, and it certainly wasn't easy to, uh, to design. And yeah, now look, I've got a mouthpiece and a horn. I just... Excuse me, you see that? Do you need that? No, not now. Could I have that? Thank you. Thanks very much. If you just hold that for one sec. Mozart, bear with me, I'm telling you what Mozart did. He wrote on the part, 
on the original part so we can see this. He wrote on the original part, just before the soloist entry, you'd think this is a horn concerto, it's Mozart, it would be very, you know, have a bit of decorum. He wrote on there, as the soloist was supposed to come in, over to you, Sir Donkey, on the part. And then at different uh, places in there, the entrance of the last theme, where it's repeated for the fourth time, he wrote, and now you will enter for the fourth time and bore me yet again. Thank God it's the last. This is all written by Mozart on the score. So he had quite a sense of humour. And I feel that uh, had he known that we have a water shortage in Sydney at the moment and people have got a lot of spare hoses, he would approve of this. So um, that's ready. Now look at that. Okay, are you ready for the snap here? I'll just get that uh, taped on. <laughs> I should have told you I was going to do this, I know. But it's going to be so much more fun than just having Chris play it. It would have been beautiful. <laughs> okay. I think this should be all right. I just need a tuning note. Watch this though, look. <laughs> French horn, French hose. So there you are on stage, you put the thing together, and the oboist plays the A to tune. Any last minute sense that this thing wasn't going to work out? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, you know, with a, a fine instrument like that, manufactured carefully on stage, straight out of the packet, uh, um, no problem at all. I mean, if, if I hadn't been able to get in tune with the oboe, I always had the option of just turning around to the audience and saying, where did he get that oboe? You know, did, he, did you make that? No? Well, man, if you're just going to turn up with stock instruments like that, you're going to have these problems, you know? Right. This is custom.